and join in together to offer this Mass to the glory of God and all the people of this parish. And so, my brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought, word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father. We worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son was revealed to destroy the works of the devil and to make us the children of God and the heirs of eternal life, grant that we, having this hope, may purify ourselves even as he is clean, that when he shall appear in power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom. He is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Zephaniah. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs, those who say in their hearts, The Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom. A day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full and terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is... O oh, blessed are those who fear the Lord. O oh, 
blessed are those who fear the Lord. O blessed are you who fear the Lord and walk in God's ways. By the labour of your hands you shall eat. You will be happy and prosper. O blessed are those who fear the Lord. Your wife like a fruitful vine in the heart of your house. Your children like shoots of the olives around your table. O blessed are those who fear the Lord. Indeed thus shall be blessed those who fear the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion in a happy Jerusalem all the days of your life. O blessed are those who fear the Lord. Second reading from Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labour pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are the children of light and the children of day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for the helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may, we may live with him. Therefore encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. The Parable of the Talents For it is if, as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, up to another one one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made three, five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of the, those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you char in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. 
So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap not where that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received at least what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O God. So today's readings are all about the last days, the end times as we call them today, or the day of judgment. We don't have to take them too literally to see the force of their message. Zephaniah gives the, his listeners the full treatment. And why? They have become complacent. They are comfortably off. They are well. They thicken in the original Hebrew, i.e. their wastelands expand. Indeed, at this point, we may be worried. Doesn't this sound a bit like us? But he goes on, in verses uh, 7 and 8, which are for some right, or 8 to 12 actually, which are some, some reason left out of the official reading. And he goes on to say more. It's the officials who commit fraud, take bribes. It's the traders and financiers who make excess profits. These are the ones who he is castigating. Israel has become a violent and immoral society. Again, there are parallels in our own society, but hopefully, hopefully we are not complete, completely corrupt. <clears throat> we do also have to remember that God is, that Jesus' Jesus's central message, message is that God is a God of love. And we are here, on YouTube, even if not in person, to listen to God's word, which it seems that Zephaniah's Israelites had given up on. Had given up on. God loves us, whoever we are. And it is this that the unworthy slave in the parable of the talents has forgotten. He is so caught up in his fear, his fear of failure, and in his jealousy of the other servants who are better at their jobs than he is, and have therefore been given more responsible tasks and more money, that he cannot see that his master is still a good master, and still values him, loves him, if the parable is about God. It is actually one of the most difficult of Jesus' parables for me. Just like the previous one at the beginning of Matthew chapters uh, 25, the parable of the wise and foolish bridesmaids who dropped off to sleep when their wedding got long delayed. Jesus explicitly give, gives the parable of the Virgin's message in the last verse of last week's Gospel. Watch therefore, keep awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. And in this parable, there's this slightly 
strange image of the master who gives his servants different amounts of money, talents. And a talentum was actually quite a large sum of money in those days. But let's look at the English sense of the word talents, and the meaning maybe becomes a bit clearer. We, <coughs> we are all given talents, but we also know that they're not the same for everyone. And one person who has all the gifts, beauty, confidence, intelligence, health, good circumstances, is not loved by God any more for their greater talents. The one who is not beautiful, not good at school, may be subject to ill health or lack of self-esteem, may even be fearful and subject to depression. That one is loved just as much as the one who has everything. In fact, as we know from the Beatitudes earlier on in Matthew, he or she comes at the top of God's list. But God still expects us to use our talents, both in obeying the great commandments, to love God and our neighbor, but also in living a good and fruitful life. And it's for that failure that the unworthy servant is left outside. If we forget that God loves us, whoever we are, we are also forgetting our God and forgetting to love what he is. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world and thank God for his goodness. Heavenly Father, we pray for your church throughout the world and for all who lead her. We pray for Archbishop Justin, Pope Francis, Patriarch Bartholomew and all who lead your church. Father, as we approach a season of Advent, prepare our hearts and our minds to make ourselves ready for the season of preparation to come. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray for our local community, for all those who live, work or study in our parish. We pray especially today for all those who are struggling 
with the current lockdown. For those who feel isolated or alone. For those whose mental health suffers. Father, we pray in a time that could be full of despair and darkness, that we might provide something of the light and hope of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray for your world. We pray especially today for all those who have responsibility for world finances. For those who control the finances of nations. And for those whose decisions have an effect on the economic stability of the nations of the world. We pray for good stewardship, stewardship of our own finances. We pray especially for Sam, our treasurer. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we pray for all places where there is violence and conflict. We pray especially today for the people of Ethiopia, for the violence that is happening there. We pray for peace and stability. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who are sick in mind, body or spirit. We continue to pray for those whose lives have been affected by COVID. For those who are unwell, in hospital or at home. And for all those who are working to treat them. We give you thanks for the advances of science that bring us a step closer to the vaccine. And we pray for all those who are devoting their lives and their time working incredibly hard to research this disease and find a cure. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who have died, for those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith. Father, we pray as this country has gone past the mark of 50,000 people losing their lives to COVID, we pray for all those who have lost their lives to this disease and through its effects. For those who have lost their lives recently, for any who have lost their lives at about this time in years gone by. And we pray for all those whom we have loved but see no longer. Lord, in your mercy. We join these our prayers together with those of the whole company of heaven, as we say, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty God. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. John the Evangelist, St. Thomas the Apostle, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty God, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread. To share in the body of Christ. Though 
though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one love. Now, Mother, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his side. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, in this holy sacrament you give substance to our hope. Bring us at the last to that fullness of life for which we live, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And of Jesus Christ, our, your, our Lord, and the blessing of God in us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in.